Hi, I'm Leader of Man and today's video is going to be about Vietnam War Medal of Honor stories. To begin, the Vietnam War was an armed conflict between the North Vietnamese Communist government and democratic South Vietnam with its ally, the United States. It was an expensive and long war which claimed the lives of more than 3 million people, half of which were Vietnamese civilians. Exacerbated by the Cold War between the Soviet Union and the United States, over 58,000 Americans would die in the conflict. Benny Atkins, born on February 1, 1934 in Warica, Oklahoma. He grew up on the family farm with his numerous siblings and after dropping out of college, he began his career in the military, becoming a Green Beret. Beginning in February 1963, he was deployed to Vietnam to train the local forces. After this, he did a second tour with the Special Forces team at Camp Aishao, located in the valley adjacent to the Ho Chi Minh Trail, where North Vietnamese troops and supplies are transported through Vietnam. The camp. Located deep in enemy territory, accessible only by air, it's a hotspot for skirmishes between the North Vietnamese and Americans. On March 9, 1966, a large attack would begin upon the camp, the relentless barrage of artillery raining down upon the Americans, and wave after wave of North Vietnamese assaulting their position. Atkins continued to fire the mortar at the attacking enemy even after the mortar crew was killed, and upon finding his team sergeant severely wounded, exposed himself to enemy fire and carried his sergeant to an awaiting aircraft to be evacuated. While continuing the struggle, one of Atkins' own companies joined with the North Vietnamese, and one of his soldiers shot Atkins in the leg. With foe inside and out, the North Vietnamese now penetrating the camp, he kept up the fight and continued to aid fellow soldiers while also retrieving airdropped ammunition from outside the camp. On the second day, more walls were breached in the camp, the US and Allied forces attempting to retake the camp unsuccessfully. Soldiers, sustaining heavy losses, were then ordered to withdraw to awaiting helicopters. Several helicopters were lost en route and the injured were given priority on the remaining, leaving the remnants of the camp with Atkins still on the ground, now forced to retreat into the jungle. Following night in the jungle, they were hunted, but were not caught by the North Vietnamese. The following day they were rescued and after recovering, Atkins returned to the jungle. In 2014, he was awarded the Medal of Honor by then President Barack Obama running into fire to receive supplies and help the wounded while repelling wave after wave of enemy assaults. Our next Medal of Honor story is about Patrick Brady. Brady was born on October 1st, 1936 in Phillips, South Dakota. When in college, Brady looked down upon the mandatory ROTC program, but after joining it, he fell in love and continued on to flight school. After the war in Vietnam broke out, Brady volunteered to go in 1964. While in Vietnam, he served as a pilot on a helicopter for ambulance evacuation, one of the most dangerous forms of flight in the war due to having to land on the ground to retrieve the wounded. His daring skill and courage allowed him to fly where other pilots would not, and this skill was called upon four times one foggy day in 1968. First, a remote outpost was under attack and Brady expertly maneuvered through the valley, covered in fog, to a small site near the enemy while receiving close enemy fire to evacuate two wounded South Vietnamese troops. The second mission was a rescue similar to the first, with low-hanging clouds and adjoining enemies. Several helicopters were lost trying to rescue the wounded from this outpost, so Brady had to convince the commander to let him try. Eventually he relented and Brady flew four missions over top the enemy to achieve all the patients. The next mission was American casualties from a firefight in an area. Brady maneuvered the helicopter accidentally the wrong way to the evac point, and after landing was beset upon by the enemies who raked the aircraft in fire. He was still able to fly however, and Brady pulled away. He found the right spot this time, and more casualties were loaded into his helicopter. After returning to base, he switched out his damaged helicopter for a new one to continue to save lives. He continued to fly smaller missions in between until he heard on the radio that some soldiers were trapped in a minefield. After scouting for a safe place to land, he eventually finds somewhere and sets the bird down. Americans are frozen where they are, afraid to even move an inch for fear of setting off a mine. Brady, not one to let patients die when he is right there, orders his crew to leave the helicopter to retrieve the injured. They carried all the patients back, but on the last trip, they set off a mine, which threw shrapnel into the aircraft, but amazingly did not kill the crew who set it off. The courageous Brady lifted his aircraft up for the last time that day, leaving 51 lives in the process. The third Medal of Honor story for today is from Paul Buca, born on August 1st, 1943, in the District of Columbia. 
He attended the United States Military Academy and graduated in the top 5% of his class. Later, he received his master's degree from Stanford, and during the summer break, he received airborne and ranger training. In 1967, he arrived in Vietnam and eventually received his own company to take command over. His unit was newly created, and his commander filled it with the rejects of all the other units. But in the end, it was one of the most decorated units in all of Vietnam. Beginning on March 16, 1968, this company of 89 men was a lead element of a massive counterattack following the Tet Offensive. They were inserted into enemy territory where they destroyed enemy fortifications and base camps. After finding a clearing and resupplying, this company continued to push through the jungle until a reinforced battalion of NVA regulars bore down upon them, just as night began to fall. Pinned down by an enemy machine gun and NVA in the trees, Luca tossed hand grenades into their positions until the firing stopped and formed a small perimeter of the remaining soldiers without artillery fire on their own as helicopters started to come in. They too were also soon engaged by NVA in the mountains. As Buka did his best to prevent them from being overrun, the soldiers put claymores around their positions and distributed grenades as they settled in for the night. Throughout the night, Buka encouraged his men to keep up the fight as he shored up their defenses and directed helicopter gunship fire. As daybreak approached, casualties were evacuated and his men left the area, leaving over 150 North Vietnamese dead in their wake. He accepted the Medal of Honor on May 14, 1970, and wore it as a symbol of his courageous men and the 10 men who died that night. Number 4. John Caviani Born on August 2, 1943 in England, later adopted by an Italian family and brought to the US. John failed to meet the physical requirements to join the army, but eventually convinced the doctor to help him in. He enlisted in the army in 1968, where he qualified for special forces. In 1970, John was sent to Vietnam he served with the South Vietnamese Sergeant Major who was mortally wounded in a mission. The dying request was for John to adopt his son, which he did. He built an orphanage for him, two other children, and several monks. Coming to visit his son during the holiday, John walked into a horror as his orphanage was burned to the ground with all the children murdered, including the majority of the monks. Eventually, still reeling from the loss of his son, John moved to a new unit with native Montagnards along with Americans. Men of his unit were deployed to a dangerous radio relay site held deep within enemy territory. John reinforced the camp and improved its defenses, knowing they would be attacked soon. After clearing enemy claimers from the surrounding area, the enemy emerged from the Charlie holes and began to attack the camp. John collected all of his men inside the camp as rockets began to rain down upon them. They counterbattered them, but John knew the situation was untenable, so he destroyed important documents and equipment. He then led his men to an evacuation point but he provided covering fire as his men were lifted away. Defying orders, he remained on the ground with his Montagnards after the army denied their pickup. They then began to strengthen the remaining defenses of the half of the camp they still controlled. After retrieving a 106 artillery round, they then buried it in the ground as a booby trap. It exploded, killing the first wave of enemies. John created a crossfire trap for the enemy with a Montagnard perpendicular to himself behind an outhouse. The enemy was annihilated. Now the NVA all began to pull away, John knew a big attack was coming, so he pulled his men back and down the hill as he fired his machine gun from a bunker, putting down the onslaught of the enemy. His Montagnards in retreat, now shot in the back, he laid down and played dead as the enemy force overtook the hill. He waited until the time was right to begin to crawl out of the bunker, John now had to escape and evade the enemy, now all alone, injured, and unarmed. He traveled the countryside for 11 days until he was eventually captured by the North Vietnamese and interned in a POW camp for 23 months. After being freed, he returned to America and was awarded the Medal of Honor by then President Gerald Ford. That concludes the story for today. If you have any other ideas for future videos, leave them in the comments below. Thank you to all service members.